In the previous demo, I introduced the, the basic uh, permissions that are available in the Linux operating system. That is, we can indicate whether uh, we have a file or a directory, and then uh, whether a user, uh, a user within some group, or some other user has read, write, or execute permissions. And we can see those permissions in the first column of the output of the ls-l command. I've created some users on my demo system here, a set of users and some files for those users. So let's see what those different users can do and see how the permissions uh, impact upon the capabilities of the users. Currently I'm logged in as S. Gordon. That's my current user, indicated by the prompt here. Uh, my current directory is slash home slash S. Gordon and by default every user has a directory in this slash home directory. So I've got some files here. Uh, in the CSS322 directory I can enter that directory because I'm the owner of that and I have uh, execute permissions and I can look at files in that directory. Let's see what I can do in seeing other users directories. So I'll go into the slash home directory and ls and we see there are a set of other uh, home directories for other users. So this is some example users that have been created on the system and that's their home directories. So from the user S. Gordon's perspective we can see that uh, I have permissions, or the permissions given for each of the directories, uh, for Bunek, Instructor, Napat, and others, uh, depends upon what's given in the first column. First, let's see what groups I am part of. Who am I shows my username. That's simple. So I am user S. Gordon. Uh, more detailed information of who am I is using my identity. If I run the command id, I can see uh, that my user id, uid here, is S. Gordon. In fact, the username is uh, identified by a unique number. So in fact, S. Gordon is really 1003 on the system, user 1003. So that's the user. Also I have a group ID, my primary group. And in this case my primary group is set up to be faculty, or group 1007. But a user can be part of multiple groups. So you have a primary group and additional groups. So in this case I'm set up to be part of the group CSS322, ITS413, and I've also in the, the as listed here my primary group, the faculty group. So the user S. Gordon is in three groups on the system. To see that in a nicer format, just run groups and you'll see the set of groups that you, the current user, is uh, part of. So let's clear. Uh, actually, we can go up and let's look and see from the permissions for these other users' directories what I can access. Let's take, for example, this line for uh, Dr. Tanarak's uh, home directory. So Tanarak is another user on the system. We see that the owner of this directory is the user Tanarak, and the group for this directory is faculty. I know I'm part of the faculty group, so we saw that from the groups command that S. Gordon is in the faculty group. So let's look at the permissions that I have on the Tanarak directory. We see here the first three characters indicate the permissions for the directory owner, that is the user Tanarak. The next three permissions indicate that for the users of the faculty group. And we see they're all dash. That is, the users of the faculty group have no permissions on the Tanarak directory. That is, I cannot read, write, or execute. Let's test that. I'll see if I can cd into that directory, that is into Tanarak's home directory. Permission denied. 
I don't have execute permission on, or the faculty users do not have execute permission on the Tanarak directory. Can I ls? No. So I cannot see inside the uh, inside uh, Dr. Tanarak's home directory. Even though I'm a member of the faculty group, the faculty group members do not have any permissions on that directory. Also, other users do not have permissions on that directory. So that means I cannot access his home directory. What about other users? Well, we see I can access their directories. The user Bunek, I can CD into that directory. We see, although I'm not part of the students group, I am another user. And we see for the directory here, other users have read and execute permission. So if I try and CD into that directory, yes, I can. And if I run ls, I can see the contents of that directory. So I can access this user's home directory and see files in that. Let's see what some other users can do. I'm going to switch users. Just for the demo, I'm going to log in as a different user. One way to do that is to use the command su, switch user, and then specify the user's name. So I'm going to switch to the user Smith. And just in this demo, I actually know the, the password. I've created these users and I know their passwords. So I'm going to log in as that user. Normally, you need to know the password to access that user's uh, account. I'll cd to the home directory. Now I'm logged in as user Smith, given by the username given here. Uh, I'm in the home directory of user Mr. Smith. And who am I? I'm now logged in as a Smith. So let's see what Mr. Smith can do in accessing other people's directories. First, what groups is Mr. Smith part of? He's part of the students group and the ITS413 group. We're currently in slash home slash Smith. There are no files in his home directory. Let's see if he can access S. Gordon's home directory. Yes. Why? Because if we see the S. Gordon directory owned by user S. Gordon group faculty, Mr. Smith is in the students and the ITS413 group. So he's not within the faculty group. He's not the user owner S. Gordon. He's one of the other users. And the permissions for other users is that they can read and execute that directory. That is, they can see the contents of the directory and they can change into the directory, that is, execute. So Mr. Smith is currently in the directory of S. Gordon. He can see the contents of the directory. Can he see the contents of file secrets? Well, we look at the permissions. It's owned by S. Gordon. The permissions for S. Gordon do not matter for Mr. Smith. He's not S. Gordon. The group is faculty. Mr. Smith is not in the faculty group. So from the perspective of the file secrets.txt, Mr. Smith is one of the other users. And the permissions for other users is that there are no permissions. That is, they cannot read, write, or execute on that file. Let's test that. Can we show the output of secrets using cat? No, permissions denied. Can we, as Mr. Smith, delete secrets using RM? It prompts us, do you want to write, or do you want to remove a write protected file? Let's try yes. Permission denied still. That is, we cannot delete the file. So we cannot read the file, we cannot delete the file. Can we modify the file if we open it in a text editor? We see down the bottom that Nano reports permission denied. Even, even if we change something and control X to try and save and say yes, 
I cannot save it as that file. So I'll cancel. So Mr. Smith doesn't have permissions to, to view, edit, uh, or execute that file. What else can we do? As Mr. Smith in S. Gordon's home directory, we see another file called print message. We see it's green. Why is it green? Because this file has execute permissions. It's actually a program that we can execute. And again, we look at what other users can do because from the perspective of this, of this file, Mr. Smith is another user. He has read permissions and execute permissions. How do we execute it? We specify that we're in the current directory, the file or the program name. And I know that how this program works, we supply some message and it should print the message on the screen. So yes, Mr. Smith can execute uh, the program print message. He can also look at the contents of that file. It's just a script in this case, a very simple script that echoes whatever we pass in as an input to the screen. Let's go back into our home directory and see what other users directories Mr. Smith can access. We see we can execute on the Boonek directory, so cd into that directory as Mr. Smith, and ls minus l, see any files in there. So Mr. Smith can access Boonek's directory. Can he see the file myassignment.txt? He can see that the file exists. Can he see the contents of the file? Again, as a reminder, Mr. Smith is part of the group, is a member of the group students and ITS413. The file myassignment.txt is owned by Mr. Bunek and the group owner is students, which Mr. Smith is a member of. But we see the permission for students group members, uh, there are no permissions. So we cannot read the file, permission denied. So we can see the file name, but we cannot see the contents of that file. We can see the file name because the directory slash home slash Boonek has read and execute permissions for the students users. Let's try another user. I'll switch to a different user, in this case Tanya Torn. Switch user, Tanya Torn, and I know her password, but I typed it wrong. I was typed the wrong password in that case, I'll try again. Okay. CD. It's current directory is slash home slash Tanya Torn. Who am I? I'm now logged in as Miss Tanya Torn. So the user has changed. Let's see what she can access on the system. Let's go into the slash home directory and again try to access another user's uh, directory. Let's see what we can access in S. Gordon's directory. We can access as we see seen before. So the user Tanya Torn can access S. Gordon's directory. What groups is Tanya Torn in? She's in the students group and the ITS413 group. Can she access the directory CSS322? Try. Try to CD into CSS322 as Tanya Torn and we find she cannot access because permission is denied. Because for that directory, you need to be part of the CSS322 group to read or execute them on the directory. Miss Tanya Torn's only members of the students and ITS413 group, as shown by the output of the groups command. 
so she cannot access the directory CSS322. But she should be able to access the directory ITS413 because the group owner is group ITS413 which has read and execute permissions on that directory and Miss Tanya Torn is a member of the ITS413 group. So let's try. We can CD in and we can LS. We can see the contents of we can see the list of files and directories in there and we can see the contents of the files because again we have read permissions for the members of the ITS413 group which Tanya Torn is. We see there's a subdirectory for students. Let's look at the permissions again. The for students subdirectory has permissions read, write and execute RWX for the users in the ITS413 group which Tanya Torn is. That means of course we can execute and CD into that directory. There's nothing in the directory at the moment. Because we have write permissions on the directory, that is the members of the ITS413 group have write permissions on this for students directory, it means that they can modify the contents of the directory. Let's try and create a file. Using nano, open a file with it, put some content in the file and save. Control X, save, yes, save as tanyatorn.txt, ls minus l. So in S. Gordon's home directory within the ITS413 slash for students subdirectory. So a home direct uh, a subdirectory in S. Gordon's home. Because the permissions are for the group ITS413, they can write to this directory. Anyone within that group can create and modify files in the directory. So we see there Miss Tanya Torn just created a file called tanyatorn.txt. She is the owner of that file. Her default group is students. And the default permissions created for that file show that others can read, that group members can read, and Miss Tanya Torn can read and write the file. So we can give other users permissions to create files in other users' directories. Let's try one more example. Let's go back to the home directory and we're currently logged in as Miss Tanya Torn and let's enter Mr. Napat's directory which we see student users have read, write and execute permissions as. Other users have just read and execute permissions. Tanya Torn is a member of the students group. So we can cd into the directory. We see that there are two files in th in this directory. With the file, the second file, not so important.txt, it's owned by Mr. Napat, and uh, the group owner is students. Recall, we are logged in as Tanya Torn, and her groups include the students group, so she's a member of the group. She has read and write permissions on this file. It means she can edit the file. Open it with nano. It's got some text in it. Add some more text. And let's save the file. Control X. Save changes, yes. Same file name. And just cat that file. So Tanya Torn has changed that file which is owned by Mr. Napat. She gets permissions to change the file because she's a member of the students, direct, uh, students group and members of the students group have write permissions on that file.
write permissions also means you can delete the file. So as Tanya Tom will try and delete the file not so important.txt with rm and it's gone. So even though the user Mr. Napat created the file, another user had permission to delete the file. What about the remaining file? Don't delete this.txt. Can Tanya Torn modify or delete that file? Let's see if we can open it in a text editor. We opened it the file with nano and nano reports an error saying we cannot read the file, we have permission denied. Why? Tanya Torn, although they are a member of the students group, we see the permissions. There are no permissions for uh, the student group members to access that file. They cannot read or modify the file. Can we delete the file as Tanya Torn? Yes or no? Gives us a warning. Do you really want to remove this right protected file? Let's try yes. I want to delete it. No problem. The file is gone. So Tanya, Kong, Tanya Tong could not view the contents of that file but was able to delete the file. Why is that? Let's go back and check why. The directory, the home directory for Mr. Napat, owner Mr. Napat, group owner students, Tanya Tom was a member of students, the permissions for students were RWX, that is users who are part of the students group can have the right permission on the directory slash home slash napat. Right permission on a directory means that you can change the contents of that directory including creating files and deleting files. So in this case, Tanya Torn had the permission to delete files into Mr. Napat's directory even though she couldn't read those files. So that demonstrates some different examples of how permissions can be used. Uh, there are much more than what we've covered here. Uh, there are some more complex attributes that you can give to permissions and it becomes complex in how you combine those nine different conditions, three different types of users, the user, the, the group and the other users, and the permissions of read, write and execute. Try and explore to see what you can do on, on shared operating systems and accessing other people's files and how you can give other people access to your files.